It was what can only be described as a head-on collision, a collision with the familiar. The familiar contained in words in Matthew 6.34, known as the Sermon on the Mount, words which not only provide the core and the distillation of Jesus' teaching to his followers, but also remind us of the substance and the aim of life. Words confronting us with choice and priorities. Seek his kingdom. Lay up treasure in heaven and not on earth. And be free from anxiety. Now, my collision was with an aspect of the familiar that has not only challenged me, it disturbs me. The collision was with the phrase, Take no thought for tomorrow. You see, frankly, it seems to go against the grain of the way I'm wired. It even cuts across my history. The truth is, in humility, I've prided myself on looking down the road, having a focus on the future. Over the years, I've had an attachment with this because of the strong, overwhelming desire to always be on top of my game. Also, when I encountered others who were not as I might be focusing or thinking about the future, I figured they were just not on top of it or just didn't understand life with its twists and surprises. And so this collision forced me into a position where I needed to back up and re-examine what Jesus was saying and what he was not saying. First, it comforts me to know when he says, take no thought for tomorrow, he is not advocating a shiftless, reckless, thoughtless attitude to life. Rather, he is forbidding a careworn, worried fear which takes the joy out of life. But <laughs> let's be honest, as human beings, we are future-oriented people, and we tend to worry about tomorrow. That's just the way it is. We, we may call it planning or anticipating or the Wayne Gretzky syndrome. A good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. The difficulty is in life with that future focus do we tend to imagine problems for tomorrow that never occur? Speaking of tomorrow, when I was younger, I was eager to get there, but didn't worry about it. So I was never present in the present, always focused on tomorrow. Well, the older I get, I'm not as eager to get there and I do worry about it. I guess I'm like the little girl I heard about who was thrilled when her dad took her to Disney World for the first time. She headed straight for Space Mountain. The dad worried that the roller coaster would be too scary for her, but she insisted, and to her delight, they wrote it twice. The next time they returned to the Magic Kingdom, the daughter, now older, again dragged Dad to Space Mountain. And as they stood in line, the dad could see her soberly studying the signs that warn about the ride's speed. Dad, she said, I don't think I want to go. The dad then asked her why she would be nervous when she had enjoyed herself so much the last time. She replied, 
This year, I can read. <laughs> Maybe that's the way with me. The older I get, the more and better I can read. And the questions come. What will become of our health? Will we go blind or deaf or lose our memories? Who will take care of us? What about tomorrow? Will we have the strength to live tomorrow well, wisely, and even joyfully? The truth that I need to trust is the strength to live tomorrow will be given tomorrow, not today, but it will be given. My task today is not to have the strength needed for tomorrow's burdens. Our task today is to live by the mercies given for today and to believe and trust that there will be new mercies for tomorrow. You see, trust combines the realization of my need and a conviction of God's sufficiency. And that adds up to relying on the Lord to do it, confidently expecting that he will do it. Remember Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust cannot be tentative or cautious. It must be wholehearted. It's an all or nothing principle. It means look for the answer in God's word. Then when we find it, we put our faith in it and our foot down on it. One of my fondest memories is Daddy leading out in family worship, singing. He was not a singer per se, but definitely a believer who sang his faith. Much of my father's simple theology was contained in three songs that still play on the tape deck of my memory. When daddy would sing, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God. And that was coupled with, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. And then, that was followed by, the Lord will make a way somehow that captured it. Whatever the situation, development, detour, turn, obstacle, or challenge, the Lord will make a way somehow. Life was a matter of not only living in God's somehow, but trusting in God's somehow. Trust, that is an affirmation of faith in God's capacity and commitment to handle tomorrow. Now, where in scripture do I get this confidence? Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 reminds us the Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. These are trying times, and we all agree. No question about that. The question is, will trying times be trusting times? Trusting his presence, power, provision, 
protection, providence. As the country poet wrote, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today. Show me the way to trust you one day at a time. Lord, we choose to seek you and we choose to trust you. Amen. Thank you.